you know your market, you know your audience, and this is the opportunity to reach out and connect with those people by sending personalised connection requests where you're really upfront about why you're connecting. So not just going hell for leather and just clicking on every no. single person that you see. It just does not work. Yeah. So that scattergun approach, you will end up with thousands of connections. But I guarantee you the work that will flow out of that will not be proportionate. You are better having a strategy around who you're actually connecting with and mm. staying in your lane. And just be really well known for mm. what you do and don't try to... Yeah. Mm. Dilute the message. Yeah, well, yeah. that's right. Well, because also then when you start content marketing, you're actually sharing content that is relevant to this group of people that you've grown strategically. Mm. So they're going to engage with it more than had you gone and connected with everybody and then started marketing. Yeah. Because Today I'm here with Lucy Bingle and she is a LinkedIn marketing expert. LucyBingle.com? Yes, that's correct. Right. Yeah. So we actually met um, a little while ago, we were on a panel of digital marketing experts and we just had so many things in common that I thought it would be really fantastic to um, sit down and ask you a few, a few questions about LinkedIn because I know my audience um, is a bit like myself. It's something that we know we should be doing, but we're not doing it. Or we are doing it, but not well. Yes. Would you agree? Yeah, I think. That would be a common <laughs> thought, yes. So if you could at least just um, tell, share with us a little bit about yourself, a little bit of the backstory, how you found yourself in LinkedIn, that would be really interesting. Okay, so um, I've been in marketing for over 20 years and um, for 11 of those years I was overseas in the UK and Europe working in marketing for financial services. Then I came back and for seven years prior to setting up this agency, I um, was marketing director for an executive search firm based mm -hmm. um, in the in Asia Pacific. And one of the funny roles that fell into my lap was training over 60 consultants on how to use LinkedIn for sourcing purposes. But always wearing my marketing hat, I used to think, well, given that the people that we're about to place are probably going to build teams underneath them or need our services, why wouldn't we be marketing on the platform about what we actually do? So, <laughs> you know, the audience is there, it's a real opportunity. So I then put together some strategies for that business mm. to do really effective LinkedIn marketing and lo and behold, we picked up work. Yeah. So then I thought, well, actually, why would it be constrained to just recruitment? Why, given that there's over 630 million members on LinkedIn, why wouldn't all businesses have a LinkedIn strategy as part of their overarching digital strategy? Well, that leads in nicely to my next question is, um, I guess we've always thought of LinkedIn as being something that corporate type businesses do, bigger companies do to engage with each other and being in sort of the small business, medium sized business world, why should they be on LinkedIn? They should definitely be on LinkedIn and the reason being is that, you know, in Australia alone we've got 11 plus million users on LinkedIn and it's across all sizes and scales and types of businesses and it's a real opportunity for small and medium sized organisations to build brand awareness, demonstrate expertise, attract talent to a business and also find suppliers and demonstrate to clients again what they do and how they do it and who they serve. So mm -hmm. it's another channel as part of, you know, the rest of your marketing strategy. But they're all playing that. So it's about um, letting – it's awareness. So there's an awareness campaign yes. around what you would do. Yep. But there's got to be a, like a, a smart way of doing it. Yep. Can you share some tips with us? Sure. Um, so it's around education. That's mm -hmm. the key difference, I think, about LinkedIn. It's that opportunity to share insights and knowledge and – Put yourself in the shoes of your customer and share success stories or ways that you solve challenges that you know your clients have. And the beauty of LinkedIn is that because they're there, you're able to share case studies, videos, infographics, all different varieties of content in a clever way that sets you up as a subject matter expert. That's wonderful. Who should be actually managing, you think, the LinkedIn strategy in a company? That's a really good question. <laughs> I only ask that because I know from my perspective is that we get a lot of people are intimidated yep. and so they'll put in a younger person thinking they're going to be great because they're younger. Mm. But who should really be doing it? Oh, definitely. 
you know what, it's actually not going to be the answer that you think. There's Because there's two concurrent strategies that are happening on LinkedIn. There's your marketing strategy. So you need a really good marketing manager or an advertising you know, mm. manager as well to be working together on that, preferably you know, in partnership with a good agency that creates content. Mm -hmm. So I don't want it being handed to somebody too junior because it is part of your marketing strategy. So definitely the marketing manager. But the other people that need to be involved, and it's not necessarily around marketing, but it is um, people and culture. So it's actually also an HR discussion as well mm. because it's about talent and it's about setting your people up for success on the platform because they're your biggest fans. So if you can also do employee advocacy where you're actually training your team and getting your team on board to support the marketing strategy, you're going to amplify the brand and extend brand reach. So what would, and that sounds awesome, thank you, you answered that, what would a marketing strategy for LinkedIn look like though for just like a typical kind of, you know, maybe there's 10 people in the business, or, you know, five to 10 people in the business, so a small business. Yeah. What would a, a LinkedIn strategy look like? Okay, so the core steps to that would be First and foremost, making sure that you've got a clear strategy that's aligned to the rest of your marketing strategy. So making sure that you've got a company page set up, you've got your people set up on LinkedIn with a best-in-class profile. Can I butt in for a second? Yep. Are you saying all your people should be on LinkedIn, not just the sales people, but all your people? All your people. All your people. Yeah. Great. And the reason being is that, you know, it's a water cooler moment too. So if they've got a best-in-class profile page, you don't know who everybody in the business knows. Mm. And so if they're set up with a best-in-class profile that represents them really well but also represents the brand really well, you, you know, you're not sure where that actually that messaging is going and you want everybody in the business to be given that same opportunity to mm. shine. Mm. So it's really important that everyone in the business has a great profile that the brand itself has a dynamic and vibrant company page that's consistently marketing in line with the rest of the marketing strategy, but making sure that the messaging you're doing on LinkedIn isn't just a cookie cutter repeat of your other channels. That's really important. <laughs> I think a lot of people are guilty of that one, myself included. So I want you to change the tone. Yeah. That leads in beautifully. So, you know, I'm all about connection, very, very strongly involved with um, pushing what I call connection marketing. So how do you connect in LinkedIn um, versus other social media channels? Because what I see, what I even feel, is that people find, they'll gravitate to one channel because they find it fun. So I find Facebook fun. Other people find Instagram fun. Um, my kids find Snapchat fun, you know, younger demographic. Nobody is finding LinkedIn fun. No. <laughs> But it could be. It could be. I or should it not be? I mean, this is, you tell no, us. No, I, look, I don't actually, you know, contrary to probably what you would assume, I don't actually think it does need to be consistently dull. I actually think <laughs> that you can mix it up. And yeah. I think the brands that do that actually cut through. I think it does still need to have a level of professionalism so that it doesn't become a mirror of other platforms. So mm -hmm. I still want it to be a centralised depository of insights, articles, knowledge, education, but I want a brand's personality and its people to also shine there as well. So if you are able to inject some humour and some um, vibrant content in it, absolutely go for it because that is what will bring the brand alive but that is actually also what will retain your audience mm. you know so i think to your point yes linkedin can be pretty corporatized and dull and i think that is one of the evolutions that will happen in linkedin mm. is that people will start to realize actually to cut through and stand out we need to think differently about this and we know that if we humanize a brand and you would know that and i know mm. that people engage with that brand because at the end of the day, people want to work with great and nice people. A hundred percent, absolutely. So if you can communicate that message in your LinkedIn on your page, is that so you're obviously putting your posts up and information and content, but I, what I'm finding with LinkedIn, which is nice, is that people will go and take the time and go check you out. So when I meet a new person, now we exchange business cards, mm -hmm. I know that they're going to my LinkedIn page and having a look, mm -hmm. whereas that might not have been the case a few years ago. Mm -hmm. So what are your top tips on, on things that are essential to be on your page, not just your company page, but your, probably what should be on your company page, what should be on your personal page? 
So your personal profile or your profile page needs to um, essentially be an online capability statement of what you do, who mm. you serve and how you solve people's problems. And to bring that to life, you need to be adding rich media files, you need to have a really clear call to action and you need to um, try and make the page look more interesting and dynamic than the other 630 million <laughs> on LinkedIn. Yeah. And the way to do that is high-res imagery, mm. you know, incorporating video, yeah. Yeah. having background images and things like that. I mean, at the end of the day, the beauty is as well that everybody on the planet has the same tool to work with. Mm. So It's a level playing field. That's what I love playing. about it. So therefore, mm. there's a real opportunity if you can actually be smart about it mm. and bring your profile to life, you can be guaranteed the vast majority aren't. So it is your way of cutting through. So on the profile page, do those steps. Mm. And then on the company page, um, be consistently sharing your articles, your insights, your successes, your point of difference and your culture and your people, like talking about your people, you know, and, you know, and then mixing it up in types of content. So, you know, you would know you're the world's biggest advocate of video. Yeah, video. I am. Video yeah. cuts through, you yeah, know, it does. and people love it and they eat it up. Yeah. And people I find on LinkedIn, more so than any other channel I've used, they really enjoy and appreciate um, good, valuable content. They don't want fluff. No. One of the things I noticed when I was on there is, um, somebody got chastised for putting up a real Facebooky style message and somebody actually put in the messages, this isn't Facebook. Yeah. And um, I thought, ooh, ow. <laughs> but, you know, something to be remembered. It's a serious platform, but like you say, you can still inject your personality into it. Have you got any examples of people that you think are doing it really well? Yourself, obviously, is one. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Lucy uh, Dingle. No. Um, but uh, who, who would you recommend people watch? Because I think to get good at something, you need to, like, have people to follow and watch. Absolutely. So I like um, Mark Ritson. I think he does a really good job. He's also a great marketer. Um, so he, I enjoy him because I, I learn a lot from him, but he's also, he's very entertaining. So he's <laughs> worth... So um, he's entertaining on LinkedIn. Okay. He is entertaining because yeah. he cuts through, you know, there's no BS with him and mm. he... Um, and he really shares some really good insights and case studies on brands, so that's interesting. And I think so he shares case studies, so that's a really good yeah. tool. And he uses it, does it as a video. He's really good. He's worth mm. watching. I'm gonna write that down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so that's good. And then you know your other main influences are still really good, like you know Richard Branson. As much as you know, I know he's mega, mega. Yeah, but he's worth watching because again. He does, he's very personable. Mm. So he's a great example of somebody that is connecting with his audience and the brand shines as a result of that. So mm. like, you know, he he's not a, he puts himself completely out there and I think that that's really interesting to watch and I think that um, the way he uses different types of, uh, you know, uh, media is also great and um, something that we can all take away. So, yeah. He'd be a great one to watch for, like what you were saying about this is what he's doing on LinkedIn, this is what he's doing on other platforms so he can sort of like see the difference. Yeah. That would be really, yeah, that's a great one. Thank you. I actually like what Mark Boros is doing. Yeah. I think he's, and I'm watching his numbers grow every week and he just puts out little snippets of content, little short, fast videos yeah. that are quite impassionate and, and emotional. What's your feeling around, and I guess this comes back to personal branding, um, uh, relaxed language, yeah. you know, but sometimes people swear. He's a bit of a swearer. Yeah. What do you think is the protocol on LinkedIn? Look, I think um, that is very much his brand voice, isn't mm. it? So, and he's sort of owned that. Like he's yeah. taken that. Unapologetic. Voice, he's unapologetic yeah. about that. Look, I, I like, I mean, even with my own content that I create, I'm very big on having my own tone. So mm. um, I don't try and be too corporate with my speak. So I, I think as long as it's in line with my values and vision and it sounds like me, I think that comes back to authenticity. Oh, yeah. yeah. So The only I, way to connect is to be authentic. That's right. So yeah. when you read any of my content or you watch me, you can. it is me. Mm. And anyone that knows me knows that and therefore they believe it. Mm. So I actually like having a more colloquial or, or, and, and without being, yeah, just a professional yet friendly time. So yeah. That's probably my advice. Yeah, and look, it's not hard. So many people are so intimidated about 
um, being themselves and they sort of feel it's that imposter syndrome. They feel like they've got to be somebody else, more professional, you know, lose five kilos and then, then they'll make that video. Like it, it's it's yeah. just literally get online and, and be yourself and share your magic yeah. that you're That's doing right. now um, and be original. Yeah. And not mimicking other people. Yeah, I think that's If right. somebody's coming on board quite late with LinkedIn or they're doing what most people have done, they actually don't have much of a strategy, so they're just getting into it now. What are probably, what's your strategy around um, getting people following you? Mm-hmm. How to do that? Mm-hmm. What's the best practice? Um, and how many people would you even want? Yeah, so um, I think before you start your connection strategy, I would like to have the other pieces of puzzle set up. So yeah. I'd like to have everyone's profiles sorted out and I'd like to have a company page that's actually starting to, um, you know, market. Mm. And then I would like to see people invest time into a clever connection strategy. And what I mean by that is, you know, you know your market, you know your audience, and this is the opportunity to reach out and connect with those people by sending personalised connection requests where you're really upfront about why you're connecting. So not just going hell for leather and just clicking on every single person that you see. It just does not work. So that scattergun approach, you will end up with thousands of connections. But I guarantee you the work that will flow out of that will not be proportionate. You are better having a strategy around who you're actually connecting with and Mm. staying in your lane. I'm yeah. a big believer in that. Yeah, you talked a lot about that last time, and, and I really believe that too. Just be known for what you do and just be really well known for mm-hmm. what you do and don't try to yeah mm, dilute the message. Yeah, well, yeah. that's right. Well, because also then when you start content marketing, you're actually sharing content that is relevant to this group of people that you've grown strategically. Mm. So they're going to engage with it more than had you gone and connected with everybody and then started marketing yeah. because it's not going to be relevant to all of them. It'll be more organic. They'll share it mm. to who they believe it should be shared with. Yeah. What, um, what do you think of people with the way that they message? Like I get random LinkedIn mm. messages all the time, the personal messages, um, where they just go straight to selling. Mm. which is we all know that's not going to work, but people still jump into that kind of, Mm. I don't know why. (laughs) What is your strategy around, do you think, if you, you know, you strategically know, use me as an example, say I want to talk to the head marketing manager at a major um, confectionery company. Mm -hmm. What would be a great way for me to try and get in touch with that person through LinkedIn? Because it's such a valuable way. It's one of the only ways you can even find out who that person is. So how would you? Well, I would like to think that before you've reached out to them, <laughs> that you're, you've got a stream of good content that you've been anyway, sharing and yeah. that your marketing has been happening. I mean, there's a couple of clever things you can do there. You can start to engage with that confectionery company's content yeah. and okay. start to um, get involved with those conversations. To be visible that to them. Being visible yeah. to them. And yeah. then you can loop around and reach out to the head of marketing yeah. at that company and it won't come as quite so left field, you know, like because they'll actually have seen you and you would have actually found your voice on the platform, been engaging with content that they had. So by the time you actually reached out to Sue, head of marketing at mm. the confectionery company, she may have already heard about you. And then when you reach out to that person, you're sending a really clear, as I said before, personalised connection request as to why you'd be connecting. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. talking about what your specialisation is, what your track record might be, and then that person is happy you've called them by your name, you've been up front with why you're connecting with them, and you've also demonstrated some track record in their space. Mm, um, yeah. So they're going to be a lot more inclined. And once you're connected to them and you're on your, your LinkedIn marketing journey, they're going to then be hearing all your insights, articles, news, whatnot. So by the time you actually pick up the phone to hopefully meet with the head of marketing, mm. they've already been validated um, I was going to say there's already there's some trust, there's, there's some trust, respect. That's right. So they've already mm-hmm. in their own mind ascertained that you're an expert, that you know what you want to do and probably more inclined to meet with you. And and it's not such a, as you said, like that scattergun approach. You can just tell a mile away when you just like, dear X, insert yeah. name, and then the message. And it's it's just vulgar. And then you hear from them once, you don't respond, you never hear from them ever again. It's just, yeah, that's right. it's the how to not do LinkedIn. <laughs> that's exactly right. So what do you see is the future for LinkedIn? Well, I think 
I believe that the future of LinkedIn is always, you know, I think talent's going to be a huge part of it and always will be because that is, you know, what it was conceptualised and built on. But I think in terms of marketing solutions, LinkedIn is becoming an ever more powerful channel and it's becoming a critical a business critical channel in an overarching digital marketing channel um, strategy. So mm -hmm. therefore, as everybody now is appreciating that they need to have a LinkedIn strategy, I think what will happen is you will have to get better at content creation, which mm -hmm. I don't think is a bad thing. Um, and I think people will have to be just smarter about how they leverage the platform. They'll realise that their people are their biggest advocates, their biggest fans, so brands will start to hopefully um, upskill their people to know how to use the platform better. And I think from a marketing and a marketer's perspective, content creation will have yeah. to lift as well. Quality, yeah, really quality. Quality, quality content creation, yeah. um, video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but also things with a point of difference so you're not just regurgitating somebody else's message. Like I think yeah. for me it's really about, that's why I've coined the whole thing around connection marketing. It's actually not really a term but I'm creating it yeah. because I want to become known as the person that is the connection marketing person. Yeah. Um, and I've actually started to hear people use the term. Yeah, which nice. is cool, That's you know, true. and I want to know that it originated here. So I just think the more original you can be, you know, it's got to be authentic yeah. to make that real connection. Yeah, that's right. That's fantastic. So how can people get in touch with you, Lucy? They can go to my website, which mm. is www.lucybingle.com, or they can link in with me on LinkedIn, and they can follow our company page, and they can reach out and talk to me directly. And you do some training, don't you? We do. Yeah. So we um, do LinkedIn strategy sessions, LinkedIn corporate training sessions, and we also manage company pages and profile pages. Fantastic. Well, I hope you found that really um, useful. I actually was uh, going to go back and watch that again. It was fantastic. I really oh, appreciate cool. you taking Thank the time. You. Thank you. I think LinkedIn, it's a bit of a mystery to people. I think the people that are doing it well are doing it really well. Yeah. And there's a whole lot of people kind of just on the fringes. So I just think it should definitely be a major part of your messaging. Probably one last question, even though we're wrapping up. A lot of people believe it's just for business to business. Is there an opportunity for people that... Um, maybe have a, more of a consumer, general consumer yeah. kind of client? Will it work? Yes, I think so. I think depending on what the product line is, but yeah. I'm definitely seeing a change in that space because I think when you know your audience and if your audience are those people that are sitting actively on LinkedIn, yeah. then there is probably opportunity for a B2C or a business yeah. to consumer yeah. um, brand to do well. Fantastic. Thank you very much. That's okay. If you like what you just heard, we'd really encourage you to, you know, like it, share it, make comments below. We'd really appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next one. Great. Thanks, Melissa. Thank, Thank you, you, Lucy.